All right, that music just stopped. That's kind of weird. So let's start. Yay. All right, let's see who's in this chat here. Who showed up today? Uh, let's see here. This, OK, every, everybody's kind of coming into the stream now. So let's say, let's say hello to everybody. Let's say hello. What's up? I got a green hand. Look, if you move it fast, you got a green screen going on. Let's see who's in the chat today. Aisha, you are the new champion for today. Well done. You've unseated our throne lolly. Our, uh, that didn't make sense at all. You've unseated our champion lolly from her throne. There we go. Well done for you. Hello there, English with Fadil. How are you doing? I hope your English is amazing. Uh, Gertie's in the house. Gertie, what's up, Gertz? She's doing all right. She's, she lives in a tropical country. She's, she's doing all right. Uh, Noir's in the house. What's up, Noir? Hello, hello. Favorites are here. Uh, Hewer, hello, Hewer. You are here, here. Sorry, that was terrible. But how are you doing? Only humans in the house. What's up, only human? Great to be only human. Hanging in there. Only humans hanging in there. He's got a tough life, but he's doing all right. Karmaton is back. What's up? What's up, man? How you doing? Uh, who else we got? Emod's back in the house. What's up, Emod? How you doing? Rajab, what's the topic? It's uh, conditionals, bro. We're going to do some conditionals today. I guess nobody says conditionals, bro. That's probably weird. Uh, but anyways, that's what we're going to do. So strap yourself in. We're going to do it. And we're going to do all of them. Um, all right, who else we got here? Free 99 English. English should be free. You're right about that. Who else we got? Uh, hello. I'm not sure how to say your name, but your first name starts with an H, so I'm going to call you H. Uh, who else we got? Edmond, hello. We got a new, I think this person is new. Hello, Edmond, how you doing? Tati's back. What's up, Tati? Tati, 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 where you been? Where you been? She's been gone for a little while now. She's one of our regulars who was missing, gone over the wall. She was, uh, how do you say that? Anyways, I forget. I forget my army terminology. She was gone, though. AWOL, she was gone AWOL, over the wall. Uh, who else we got here? There we go. Lolly's in the house. Welcome, Lolly. She, she's okay. She's, she's alive. Uh, Aaron's in the house. What's up, Aaron? How you doing? McKaylee, no. You're perfectly on time, McKaylee. Just on time. Uh, Maya's in the house. What's up, Maya? How you doing? All right. M's in the house. What's up? Mustafa, what's up? Ali, how you doing? How many people are working in your office? <laughs> Mustafa, if you look carefully at my office, you'll notice that this man and this girl, this girl has been adjusting her seat for the last, I don't know, ever since I started. And you'll notice that this man, for some reason, he does the same thing every day. He's like a robot. And you, you'll notice that there, there's not much variation in their routine. So, so mostly it's a bunch of slaves who work here. And they're all robots. And they all just work in a loop. So this is a video behind me. So it's, there's no people there. Otherwise, I would be screaming. And they'd be like, Kent, shut up. We're trying to work. And that's not going to happen. That wouldn't go well. So. Here we are, we're all together, together again, the smart crew, the smart international team, the way we like it. So what we're going to do today, let's move on over to our smart library, and we're going to be looking at some high-level English, because you guys are so high-level that I can barely think of what to do with you. So in this situation, I decide to smash you with all the conditionals possible. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that. We're going to look, and I think we'll also really look at some mixed conditionals. We'll look at how can you mix up your conditionals so you're not using the same all the time. OK, so that's, what we're, that's the plan for today. We're going to perfect your conditionals and work on them. So there are a lot of different types of conditionals. And we're going to start with the first one. And we'll finish with the last one. Uh, all right, so here we go. Let's jump in, shall we? Jump into these conditionals. Uh, here we go. Conditional sentences, facts and non-facts. A fact is a true thing. Non-fact, not true. English tense, past, present, future, can be divided, separated into two different categories. Tenses that are used to describe facts, true things. The sky is blue. Pizza is delicious. Coffee is necessary. And those that are used to describe non-facts. If I were you, um, I would like to fly. That would be great. Uh, Non-facts, things that are not true. So facts can be considered to be very real or very possible. Okay, I think you, you know that already. You've done all this before. So for example, I work at a gas station. I do not make much money. That's true. Most people who probably work at gas stations don't make 
a huge amount of money. If I can get a better job, I'll take it. That's a true thing. That's a true statement. And you notice that the grammar is normal. It's like if I get a true if I get a better job, I'll take it. That's kind of a normal sentence. And we're using if. This is really what we're going to look at today. Hello, hala. Uh, and non-facts, again, not true, are imagined or unreal or hypothetical or improbable, maybe less likely that they're going to happen. So we got all those. For example, I wish I had a lot of money. What do you wish? What do you wish you had? That's a good question. What do you wish you had? Hmm, solid question. What do you wish you had? I wish I had a lot of money. I wish I had more free time. I wish I, what else? What do you wish? Hmm, I wish I could take a vacation to Hawaii for a week. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I will. What about you? Give us a few wishes. So give us a, get, start thinking about your imagination and things that you would like to do because that's going to fit perfectly into that grammar. I wish I had seen you. Thank you, Mustafa. Well, you're seeing me now. It's cool. It's cool, Mustafa. We're here. Oh, Noir, yeah. You wish I had a better life. Yeah, I hear you. I wish I had a lot of love. Lolly, Mwah. you have a lot of love. It's right in front of your nose. Come on, Lolly. We're here. We all love you. We were like, everyone was like, where's Lolly? Where's Lolly? She's not number one. So don't worry about that, Lolly. You got some love. Aaron, I wish I were more knowledgeable. Sure, you're pretty smart. Everybody knows something, Aaron. Narayana, I wish I had a good salary. Yeah, salary's good. I wish I could be a teacher. Why not, Rajab? You can be a teacher. Just study something, become really good at it, and then you can be a teacher. Why not? Rajab, I believe in you. You can do it. Maya, I wish I visited Canada. Yeah, you should come. You should come. It's a cool place. Not in winter, but in summer. It's amazing. I wish I had an international passport. Yeah, there we go. I know only humans feel a little needs a, needs a break. Yeah. Uh, it is grammar, hala, but that's okay. There's, you didn't miss too much. We're going to get into the practice right away. Uh, you're, don't worry, Lolly. We're good. We're good. Yeah, see? M loves you. We all love you, Lolly. You're all good. You got lots of love. Don't forget about us. We love you. Uh, I wish I was a professional, a professional lawyer. Yeah, okay. That's cool. All right. All right, good. So, again, these are all wishes. These are things which are not facts. They happen in your mind, correct? So, let's look at another one. Let's look at another example. If I had a lot of money... I would open my own business, coffee shop, absolutely. And I would sell international coffee from around the world. It's already happening, but I would do it as well. Brazilian coffee, the Italian blends, whatever they do. And then, of course, you know, African coffees. Boom, that's exactly what I would do. So tenses, past, present, future, talk about facts, are used to refer to facts related to, connected to real time. For example, a past verb refers to the past. Mm -hmm. I had a great time at the party last night. So that's a normal sentence. So this is not a conditional sentence. This is a normal sentence. So you can see if it's a normal sentence, we just use normal past. However, tenses, past, present, future, used to talk about non-facts are not related to real time. In general, we express the non-fact by shifting the verb form backwards. For example, present to past. So when we talk about your imagination, we use past verbs we, sorry, we use, but yeah, we use past verbs. We use past grammar, but the idea is not past. What, what, what? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little confusing. Well, let's give some examples. If I had my own business, I would be my own boss. So you can see in this sentence, the past verb, we use a past grammar, but the idea is present or future, okay? If I say, for example, if I had my own business, I would be my own boss, it actually sounds like right now. But I can easily change that to the future. I can say, if I had my own business next year, boom, future, I would be my own boss. So you can see that we use had. We have to use the past when we use imagination things. So the grammar is past. The idea is present. Hello, Manir. Vlad, you wish you lived in Hawaii? Yeah. I wish I didn't live in Hawaii. What's the difference? Um, what's the difference? Uh, one is you want to live in Hawaii, and one is you don't want to live in So basically, the one... The first one is, I want to live in Hawaii. I'm imagining that. I wish I lived there. Number two is, you live in Hawaii, but you are imagining you don't want to live there. All right? So that's the difference. OK? If I had a lot of money, you would make more money. That's possible. We could lose it. That could work as well. All right. Uh, I don't fear. Maya, you're from Russia, and you don't fear cold winters. Yeah. OK, well, then come on over. Then you'll fit right in in the cold Canadian winters. 
that's no problem. So in the above example, the past verb had does not refer to the past. It refers to the wished for present and future, right? So like I said, it can be present, it can be future. You just, if you're going to make it future, you need a time expression. Next week, next year, na na na. Okay, cool. Got that. Next, let's look at some different examples. So type 0. We've got different types of conditionals. We're going to look at type 0 and type 1. So you guys help me out with this. You help me with these rules as well. So let's talk about type 0. Type 0. So let's look at this. What does this mean? Type 0. Present simple and present simple. So let's put this in here. So 0 conditional, type 0. Oops, I got it twice. Anyways, type 0. Present simple, present simple. What does that mean? Now well, let's look at an example. If you press this key, the computer turns off. Mm hmm. Okay. Here's another one. If he wakes up late, he gets cranky. Correct. If I boil water, <laughs> it boils. Or if I, maybe you want to say, if I heat up water, yeah, or, right, it, it warm. Boils. You can do it. Next. Now, so let's just start with type 0. Thank you, Aisha. Good. General, good. Yeah, if you guys got input, just, just add it. Just add it to the chat. General and scientific facts, which are true. Correct. I like that. I'm going to steal Aisha's definition and make it my own. Thank you, Aisha, because this is a good explanation. Type 0 we use to talk about general and scientific facts, which are always true. So let's talk about something that's always true. If I don't eat breakfast, so finish my sentence. Dun, 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 dun. And I'll give you the idea. I, da, 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 da. I think I spelled breakfast wrong. It's not a party, it's a feast. If I don't eat breakfast, I finish that sentence. Because this is a type zero conditional. The general truth, exactly. All right, so that's a type one Maya. So you're doing the next one. Let's, keep a, let's try to do the type zero first. So if I don't eat breakfast, I, correct. And maybe you get angry and hungry, you get hangry. Here's a new word for you, hangry. If you didn't know this word, it exists, but it's kind of slang, right? It's kind of funny. I'll be starving, yeah. So again, and again, Lolly, you too, don't use the future because today we're talking about, we're talking about repeated things. They're always true. So that means we have to use present simple grammar in both parts, in both clauses. Okay, so we don't use will. We don't use I am going to in the type zero conditional. If it rains, so, oh, sorry, I am highlighted the wrong one. It's my fault. It's my mistake. Please listen to what I say, not what I show you on the computer. All right, so let's try this again. Let's just look at the type zero. If you press this key, the computer goes on. Uh, if he wakes up late, he gets cranky. So let's just look at type zero. I can say I will be hungry because some don't be hungry. Yeah, you're right. But remember, right today, right now, we're just looking at repeated things, right? Yeah, I don't feel well every day. So we go, for example, if I don't eat breakfast. So that is present simple grammar. I get hungry. This is also present simple grammar. So type equal type zero. Okay, so whenever we use type zero, the zero conditional, that means we have to use present simple in both parts of the clause. Okay? If I don't eat breakfast, I get hungry. If I don't drink coffee, I get crazy. I, uh, you know, uh, something repeated. So that's a repeated action. Okay, there we go. Perfect. If I don't drink coffee in the morning, I find it difficult to sleep at night. That's crazy, Aisha. That's a little unusual, and I wish I was you, because what if I drink coffee? Like, I don't sleep. I get hungry and angry. Yeah, so new word, Lolly. New word for you. It's, I think we learned this before. Hangry. Hungry, angry. But boom we can put them together. You are hangry. Pintu! Pintu's got some questions. Oh, I love Pintu's questions. They're difficult. Uh, sir, please suggest a book for learning vocab parameters like connotation and denotation. <laughs> oh, Pintu, what a question. What questions you ask me? What predicaments you put me in? Uh, let's see, Pintu, what can I do for you? 
Ah, connotations and denotations. So how about this, PM2? Oxford Word Skills. I really like this book. They have a series. And they have regular. And we have Oxford Word Skills. This is pretty good. Idioms and phrasal verbs. That's a really good book. I really like it. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty modern because some of the books are really old and they use like really weird phrasal verbs. This one's pretty good. It's not the best ever, but it's pretty good. Um, okay, check out that. Okay, all right, good. I let's see. What are you talking? About? Connotation and denotation. Let's see what, he, what is he talking about. Connotation. Oh my goodness an idea or feeling that invokes in addition to its literal or primary meaning undertone undercurrent wow um yeah probably because they're idioms right so there's hidden meanings right there's there's subtle meanings that you have to get uh, you know what honestly man i don't know if you can learn it'd be hard to learn connotation because it's it's something you get from speaking an english you know speaking a language for a long long time so i'd say start with idioms and that might it's hard, man. That's, you're asking for a book that probably doesn't exist. That's a really difficult book. But I would start with phrasal, phrasal verbs and idioms. That could get you closer to what you want. All right, let's go here. Let's go to type 1. Let's take a look at type 1. Now, let's look, now we'll look at the type 1. So here's an example of type 1. Hello, Maria. How are you doing? Get in here. If it rains, I'll get wet. If he doesn't come soon, Thank you, thank you, Narayana. Good, so now, if we talk about type one, we need, now what did I say in type one? If I don't, what did they say here? If I don't eat breakfast, I will get hungry. So let's, in the first clause, we got our present simple again. So we don't change that. We keep the present simple grammar. And in the second clause, we use future. Future simple grammar. Or you can say, I am going to get hungry. That's also cool. And it's also future simple grammar. So finish the sentence. If I win, okay, this is the most classic sentence I can give you in when we do this activity. Uh, if I, no, it's not. No, I'm thinking of conditionals. If I get a better job. So finish this sentence. I, da, 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 da. And you remember, you have to use future. Use future. If I get a better job. I, no, 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 no. So finish that sentence. You can use will, you can use I am going to, I will. You could use might, you can use basically anything as long as the idea is future. I will buy a new car. Okay, that's cool. I will be rich. Wonderful. Great idea. Have a better salary. Absolutely true. And remember, for type zeros, or sorry, type ones, these situations, situations are possible. Remember this word. They are possible. These can really happen. Because we're going to look at hypotheticals, we're going to look at other conditionals, and they are not possible or really less possible. Be more successful. I no, Simon, no, no, not would buy. Today we're still on will. Because if you get a new job, that's possible, right? If I get a new job, I will buy a laptop, or I'm going to buy a laptop, or I might buy a laptop, you know. And again, some future time could be good. It doesn't have to be future, it could be present, but often when we use will, it's going to be future. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If Lolly misses a stream, I will be surprised. Totally. Uh, I'll be able to travel more frequently. We'll travel abroad. Yes, yes, yes. Aisha, absolutely come to Vancouver. That's a great idea. If I don't get to know you soon, I will be lonely and miserable. Oh my, Gina, I'm sure you'll be okay. Lovely person, but I'm sure you'll be okay. Uh, okay, cool, good, good. I will be in a better mood, lovely. Awesome. 
Okay, so those are type ones, right? Those are the future ideas and possible situations. Sir, have you read Norma Lewis, Word Power Made Easy? I have not, Pintu. I'm sorry, I have not read that book. Uh, can we say, would does would express future? Hang on, M, two seconds. I'm going to explain would in two seconds. Possible situations and consequences? Yes. So remember, if we use the type 1, if we use the type 1, it's talking about future things which are possible. It can happen. And if we use the type 0, we're talking about things that do happen regularly, regularly, again and again and again. Okay? Next. Let's keep going. Okay. Okay. And another little note here. We always use present simple first. If I meet, if I go. We don't say, don't say, if I will go. Mm -mm -mm. So if you have if, we don't use will after it. We only use present simple. If I go, mm -hmm. if I buy, mm -hmm. if I will buy, mm -mm. if I will go. Mm -mm. Okay, so after if, no will, no future ideas. Only future ideas in the main clause, in the if clause, nada. Only present. Okay, let's go on. Do, 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 do. When will is used to express insistence, it is stressed and never contracted. Okay. Should and happen to can be used in the condition clause to suggest that something may happen by chance. Okay. So let me show you this one. It's a little bit advanced, but let me give you this one. Which words are used in place of if? Uh, another way to say if, Vlad, is weather you can use weather or as long as oops as long as same equals if uh, or provided that or providing that or so long as those ones sound a little bit more formal mm. sorry I told you weather weather Weather, mm, hold on, I'm, I might be confusing grammar here. No, no weather. I think I'm confusing that. I'm confusing that with a different type of grammar. No weather. Don't use weather, Vlad. As soon as, uh, as soon as I, uh, I will, as soon as, did I, yeah, as soon as I come across her. Ooh, can as soon as be in all conditionals? It can be. Type 1, type 1, good question. Type 1, as soon as I see him, I will give you a call. If I see Now, be careful, be careful, Lolly, because as soon as and if are different. As soon as means you will see him, but if does not mean will. If is maybe. So be careful that as soon as is not the same as if. But provided that as long as, so long as, those ones are okay. Um, if not. There's another one. I'm forgetting one. Unless, yes. Unless, you're right, is also possible in some situations. All right. Pintu's got a question. I've got to answer Pintu's question. Sir, you teach British or American English? American Pintu. Can you not hear the, actually, correction, Canadian English. I teach Canadian English, which is... Similar to American English, but with some differences. We have different words. So you can't you can't hear? So no, there's no British, there's no British English here. Okay, we're good there. So now let's take a look at this sentence. I want to show you something here. If you should come across Pearl, tell her to give me a ring. If you happen to find my books. The, so these sentences, so they were explaining here that. You can also make these sentences. So basically, should and happen to can be used in the condition clause to suggest that something may happen by chance but is unlikely. It sounds, it sounds formal as well, so don't forget that. If you happen to find my keys, uh, you know, uh, so in that situation, they would be slightly formal and unlikely to happen. So you can use that as well. Okay, so for example, you might say something like this. So you could finish this sentence. Uh, if you happen to meet a celebrity, 
Mm, so finish this sentence. Dun, dun, dun. So try that one. So again, if I use this word happen or should, if I should meet a celebrity, this means that the situation is less likely to happen. So it's still possible, but less likely. So what could you use here? Finish that sentence. If you happen to meet a celebrity, which is not likely, it's probably not going to happen, what would you do? I would... Oh. Oh, no. So don't use would. Sorry, I'm, I'm making a mistake. You could use would, but... Oh, that's weird. It could be either. If you happen to meet a celebrity... Uh, yeah, is it a hypothetical? It does sound like a hypothetical, doesn't it? So why is it here? Mm, if you should come across Pearl, tell her that you should tell her. Oh, that's weird. If you happen to find my book, you should send me an email. So we're using shoulds. We're not using wills here. Interesting. Um, yeah, I agree with Lolly. Probably would use would here. I would be happy. Anyways, if you look at these sentences here, if you should come across Pearl, this is a person, uh, tell her to give, to call me. So you can see here, we don't use, you should, you could say you should tell her to give me a ring, that would be okay. Ooh, that's really weird. I never thought about that before. That's a little, that's a little, but it is possible. So for example, if you happen to find my book, you should. So it's a lot of shoulds here, right? It's the first idea that comes, so you can use should after the if and you could you should in the main part but you wouldn't really use will if you happen to find my book you will send me an email sounds rude actually so you, I, we don't really use so in these ones I might suggest that you use should in the second part of the clause and in the first one you can use it in the first that could be a little confusing but yes correct one 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 I'm gonna call you one because I'm not sure how to pronounce with the tones, Mandarin tones. All right, so there we go. Now, okay, here we go. So here's another word. So this is for you, Vlad. Uh, what's another way to say if? Well, you could say providing, provided that, or providing, or providing that. Those are correct. You could also use supposing. And this one's a little bit more informal. This is good for speaking. And again, we already talked about this. You can also use the word unless. And unless, generally, not always, but most of the time, means if negative. I'll be, I'll come tomorrow if I don't hear from you before. Right? Does that work? I'll come here unless I hear from you tomorrow. I'll come tomorrow unless I hear from you before. Hmm. Unless is tricky, but sometimes it does mean if negative. Okay? So that's, that's all I'll go with there. Sometimes it's hard to correct the mistake until you see the mistake. So we'll see if we get a few examples today. Uh, Pintu, sir, have you ever visited India? I'm Indian. I have not visited India, Pintu. I, it is on my list. One day, I, I'm, a, I'm not... Busy cities are, are not the thing that I'm really interested in these days. So if there's some wonderful countryside to see, I'd probably be interested. But no, I haven't been to India. But it is on the list. It is on the list. All right, let's look at type two. Type two conditionals. Okay, let's take a look at type two. Moving on, type two conditionals are not based on fact. They express a situation. They express imagination, right? Maybe a dream you have. So it's not real, it's just in your mind. You're just thinking about, oh, this would be great. This would be great. It's not this will be great. This would be great. You're just imagining it. This unreality is expressed by backshifting the tense. So present verbs change to past verbs. Huh? Present verbs change to past verbs. So for example, if you had, okay, hang with me, we'll do this. Type two, all right, what's Narayana got? Regret imagination in the past, but feeling now. Both clauses should be in the past tense. Thank you, Narayana. Please listen to Narayana, everybody. She seems to have whoosh, nailed this. That doesn't sound like nail. But anyway, she's right. Um, we use, when we use type two, type two conditionals, use past grammar, okay? Will plus verb changes to would, correct, right? And I think, I'm not sure why that's like that, 
but yes, you're right, right? Will would change to would. would. We use would for imagination. We use will for possible things like we talked about. So they express a hypothetical condition and its probable result. Okay, so basically something in your mind, imagination. Let's take a look at a few examples. Mm -hmm. If I were taller, you are not taller. You will not be taller. You cannot be taller unless you buy some shoes or get some incredible surgery, which you should not do. Be happy with yourself. If I were taller, I'd join the police force. In reality, I am not tall, and you will never be tall enough to join the police. So this is only in your mind. So if it's only in your mind, you can see we use past grammar. We don't use present anymore. And, and we use would. This is would. I'd is also would. And so again, will changes to would. So we go down. We go from uh, buy to bought, will to would, right? So when we use the hypothetical type 2 grammar. Another one. Okay, let's, oh, this is a great question. I want you to answer this question, please, because we have one. It's nice to have questions. If you saw a ghost, what would you do? I would say, what's up? How are you? Are you really a ghost? I might say that. I like to think I would say that. Hey, what's up, ghost? Hey, how are you? I've never met a ghost before. Do you understand me? Can I high five? Give me a high five. I'd be like, because everybody's afraid of ghosts. Maybe ghosts feel lonely. Maybe they're just hanging out and nobody wants to talk to them. So maybe you do that. If I knew your phone number, I would call you. There we go. Yeah. Uh, we also use wood for mixed conditions. We do. And maybe, no, only human, I'd hang out. No, I wouldn't run. I'd say like, hey, ghost, what's up? Go for coffee? Let's talk. You probably have an interesting life. Uh, if I saw a ghost, I would scream, no, I think you got to like ask questions and be like, what are you doing? What are you doing today? Are you doing, what are you doing anything later, ghost? Should we go for, call the Ghostbusters? Ha, 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 oh, Aaron, nice one. Maybe the answer of the day. Uh, I would ask him to give me money. Ghosts, why would you ask the ghost to give you money? Probably wouldn't have any. I would go away. Okay, would run away. Probably run away. I would be insane. All right, so there could be some some. Yeah, you could need some therapy if you if you're seeing ghosts. That's definitely a possibility. And everybody seems to have the answer. I would. I would. I would because it's all in the mind. Good. So. The difference between type one and type two conditional sentence is not related to time. Both can talk about the present and the future, but by using a past verb in the type 2, the speaker suggests that the situation is less probable, impossible, or imaginary. Compare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If it rains this weekend, I'll stay home. That's possible. If it rained in the Sahara, the desert would have a lot of trees. Impossible. Or less possible. If there is a nuclear war, we will... Oh my goodness. Oh, let's do these together. These are fun. Let's do this one. Oh my god. I, I kind of like apocalyptic scenarios. So let's do this one together. Finish this sentence, please. Hmm. What do you got? Give us one. So this one is the type 1 conditional. So this one is real, not imagination. So if there is a nuclear war, which is possible. It's possible. We have everybody, a lot of countries have nuclear weapons. They might decide to get into a fight. Pintu, sir, am preparing for a competitive exam with in which 350 marks in English, for which I need advanced grammar and knowledge, vast vocabulary, deep comprehensive skills, and good writing skills. So please guide me, sir. Pintu, I cannot, unfortunately, as much as I love your questions, I cannot design the whole class just for your needs, so because we have a lot of people in this class. So I recommend participate in the class, ask questions about what we're focusing on. All of the stuff we're focusing on will help you, but I cannot, I cannot help you in one class to improve all of your English skills. It, it's, it's not going to happen. It's really hard to do. It takes a long time to learn a language, so jump in, ask questions. If you have mistakes and you have questions, ask. 
but unfortunately I don't think I'll be able to help you with all of that. But we are working on stuff which you can definitely use in your tests coming up. All right, survive. <laughs> okay, we got total opposites here. Tati says we will survive. Um says we won't survive. Lolly says we wouldn't survive. Gina says if she were skinny, okay, this is not about nuclear war. If I were skinny and tall, I would do modeling. Uh, if there is a nuclear war, we will regret our inhumanity. Totally agree. We definitely will. We'll probably live underground. Yeah, that could definitely happen. It will not be a nuclear war. It's a joke. Um, I agree. There's probably, hopefully, not going to be a nuclear war. We will become monsters. And Lolly, you've been watching too much Hollywood. That's for sure. Uh, all right, let's try another one. So that was the type one, right? That was the future one. Do, 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 do. Um, ooh. Ah, okay, let's try this one. I'm going to change this one. If you came from... Ah, okay, this is cool. I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to just do this. So finish this one, too. Finish this one. So this is the type two. This one's a good one. If you came from my country, you'd recycle. Go to Tim Hortons. I'm talking about Canada. If you if you came from Canada, something's. I think there's a ghost at my door. Uh, if you came from Canada, you'd recycle. You'd wash your recycling. You'd go to Tim Hortons, which is a big company in Canada. You'd probably say a like, oh, it's nice, eh? It's very Canadian. And you'd. Appreciate clean air if you came from Canada. What about your country? What would people be like? You, okay, so if you came from my country, you would live without Chinese cuisine? Okay, why? Why would you, why would you not have Chinese? Where are you from? One, one, or your, new na your new Latin name is one. You know English and French, that's cool. Uh, Pintu, but you can guide me, sir. You can tell me some sources. What I have to do, I'm not a native speaker of English. Uh, Pintu, I do not know which test you are preparing for, so I have no idea what they want on your test. Uh, read books, man. Read books, Pintu. Books are the best. Books are the bomb. Uh, review your grammar. I think, I think grammar would be a good idea for you to keep working on. Do one unit per week. Practice writing. Vocabulary books are a great thing as well. Uh, have a little bit of everything, a little bit of grammar, a little bit of vocab. There's no secret into, there's no magic, there's no magic pill you can take which is going to make you an English speaker. Unfortunately, the magic pill is hard work. Climb that English mountain. That, that is, that is the, the best answer I can give you because it doesn't happen easily. Uh, okay, all good there? So, what else we got here? So, if you came from my country, what else did you have? You would wish to run away. Great idea. Uh, you would visit me, Lolly. Very nice. Very nice. That's a good idea. You would throw rubbish everywhere or anywhere. Both of those are good. M, but why type 2 is it possible to visit Canada? Um, I don't know. So, so again, remember, this is, this is a sentence for you. If you came from my country. Oh, that's a weird one. If you came from my country. Yeah, so you're saying, you're talking to me. You're saying, if I came from your country, you would what? So if I lived in your country, that's what you're trying to answer. Uh, who comes? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Some guys, they were just picking up some stuff. Uh, Maya, if I came from Canada. Okay, but I'm, I'm not, ta don't talk about Canada. Talk about your country. I want to know your country, and then I want you to tell us what would we do, or what would we think, or what, how would we behave. Okay. All right, so that's the idea. If you came from, I don't know, Brazil, or Yemen, or wherever, how would you be? Here we go. Tati's on it. If you came from Ukraine, the Ukraine, Ukraine, we talked about this, uh, you'd speak Ukrainian <laughs> without any accent. Yeah, probably. Uh, if you came from my country, you'd buy clothes for four seasons. Okay, interesting. Uh, if you came, and again, tell us your country. Uh, if you tell us your country, because we don't know, we don't, we have so many students in here, and we don't really know where everyone's from. So if you came from the Ukraine, or if you came from Brazil or Mexico or Spain, give us your country name as well. I would behave well. I would behave well. Behave is a verb and you have to use well after it. Okay. Now, last one. I think we're going to go to the last one here, type 3. 
Mm-mm-mm. Okay. Do, 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 do. Ba, 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 ba. Where are you? Type 3, type 3, type 3. Here we go. Type 3 conditionals. Narayana or someone else is probably going to help you with this one. Type 3 conditional sentences are not based on fact. They express a situation which is contrary to reality in the past. Okay, so basically type 3, type 3, talk about, express hypothetical, express imaginary ideas in the past. Okay, so these ones are not present, they're not future, they're only past. And then again, we have to change the grammar. So let's take a look at a couple examples. So past, correct, changes to past, perfect. Would plus verb changes to would have plus verb. Remember this. Here we have would, my finger disappears, and then have, and then the past participle. So it's a special verb as well. Over there, present, right? Do you know what I mean? So anyways, we're going to look at this one now. So if you're talking about the past, I would have gone, I could have gone, I might have gone, we have to use this grammar. Uh, do, 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 do. Pintu, watch smart English. Sir Sean, the knight himself, the, la the man, the legend. Pintu, I'm going to help you big time, buddy. All right, let's listen up, Pintu. I want you to watch this. Go to this wonderful website. It's called YouTube. And I want you to do this. Go to YouTube and I want you to search Smart English. And then, once you're here, you can click on Smart English. I hope you're watching, Pintu. I'm helping you out big time. Smart English. And you go here and you can see that we are live now. Awesome. Now, Julia, she also does some pretty awesome stuff. That man, amazing. That man, uh, don't know who he is. Now, let's see where it is. Upper intermediate. So there's this, this as well, but no, these are not the videos I want. Go to playlists. And we want to find Sean. Where's Sean? The man, the legend himself. Nope, that's not it. Oh, they're on here. I know they're on here, but I don't know where they are. Hang with me, guys. Where is he? Let's go to the home page. Smart English. Sean, where are you, Sean? Oh, man, he's on here. But anyways, Pintu, this is what you need to do, man. You need to go to this web page, and you need to find the legend, Sean. Search for this man's name. So, or actually, just do this. Go Smart English Paragraph Structure. That's the man you want to find. This will improve your writing, Pintu. Pintu, are you there? Are you listening to me, man? Find this man, and actually this man as well. So just go and go search paragraph structure or anything. This guy's good. He does lots of cool videos for writing and speaking as well. This man is amazing. So go find these videos. These are the ones you want. These professional looking videos here, which have little labels. That's what you want. Okay, Pintu? That's what you need to do. Oh, good, Pintu's listening. Go there, Pintu, and learn. Learn English from those amazing mythical men. Okay, cool. Returning. Let's go back. I've saved Pintu from certain destruction. You're welcome, Pintu, by the way. And uh, here we go. Let's go to the last one. Okay, so now we have to look at, let's look at this one. Uh, here we go. So now we need to finish these type 3. Oh, those are type 4s. All right, let's look at a few examples first. <laughs> no, oh, Kuram, what do you want? Uh, I could share the trans. So, Kuram, if you watch the video again on YouTube, they have subtitles. YouTube creates subtitles, and then most of the subtitles are pretty good. So, no, there's no transcripts. This is all Kent being creative, talking freely. Watch the video again, and then you'll get everything. Uh, okay, so let's look at an example here. If I had known his background, I would never have employed him. Had known equals past perfect grammar. This is important. 
had plus past participle. Okay, that's important. Number two, would. Okay, fine. I'll say wouldn't, would not have employed him. So we have would plus have plus past participle. That's how you do the type threes. All right. Now let's do, let's do, let's do a sentence. If I hadn't seen, found, smart English. What would have happened with your life? Oh, it would have been sad, really sad. I would or would not. Okay, so here's your sentence. Please finish that sentence. That's an amazing sentence. If I hadn't found smart English, I would or I wouldn't. You can say whatever you want. So go ahead, try to finish that idea right there. That's a good one. That's a good sentence. If the government had good plans, mm, almost been to, had had. Because remember, this, this sentence is really in the past. So we actually have to use past past grammar. We use extra past. So the, if the government had had good plans, he, there we go, the second part is good. He could have saved the state from famine. That's correct. So be careful. Just be careful to follow the rules. Learn the rules and follow them. One, if I had slept early this evening, I would never have seen Kent tonight. And that would have been sad, Juan. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I was to write soft copy. Is a mistake. I was right. So I don't know. Uh, Karam, I'm not sure what a soft copy is. I know what a transcript is. We don't have transcripts, but YouTube does have subtitles. So after this video is finished, you go back on YouTube, watch it again, you'll get the subtitles. Perfect. Uh, okay. Aaron, had I not watched, had I not studied hard, I wouldn't have passed the test. Nice sentence, Aaron. Aisha, I wouldn't have learned such valuable lessons from Kent. Ooh, like your style, Aisha. Like it a lot. Only human, I would have missed great information. Also like your style, only human. Saima, I would not be able to clarify my grammar confusion. Yes, correct. I would not improve my English. Big E on English M. Lolly, if I had watched smart videos before, I would have spoken English better. Boom, very nice. Good sentence. I would have struggled. I wouldn't have known. Be careful, Vlad. Remember, you need a past participle. So, knew, no, known. So, with an N. Uh, wouldn't have spoken English? Yes. Maya? Oh, he got it. He corrected himself. All good. If I hadn't discovered SMART, it's actually S-M-R-T SMART. It's not S-M-A-R-T, it's S-M-R-T, just like Homer Simpson. Uh, I would have known, I would, so careful Maya, if I hadn't discovered SMART English last year, comma, I wouldn't, my English would have been much worse. My English would have, don't forget have, you forgot, would have been much worse. Okay. Now, we got that. Most, people, most of you are pretty good. Last one we're going to do is type 4. Okay, now type 4 is a mixed conditional. We're going to mix it all up. Now, we're going to show you some examples of a mixed conditional sentence. So here it says, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, type 4. It is possible for each of the two clauses in a conditional sentence to have a different time reference. So we can mix time. And I'll show you how. And the result is a mixed conditional. Mm -hmm. The second, and I'll, there's a really there's a popular form of the mixed conditional, which I'll show you. So let's try this one. If if we had brought, so again we're using had brought, right? If we had brought a map with us, we would know where we are now. Which which two times? are mixed here. There are two times. Or which two conditionals? Which two conditionals are mixed here? Kurams, there. How can I print this lecture on paper? Because I do not have anything. I don't think you can print it, Kuram. I think you just watch it, watch it again, 
Um, I don't know how you would print it. Just watch it again. I think that's probably good enough. You don't need you don't need to print it. Just pause, right? Pause and keep reading. Two and three, two and three. Yeah. So where's three? So if the third and the and where's two? You're right. You're totally right. It's two and three. But where's the third conditional section clause? And where's the second conditional section clause? So if I had brought a map with us, why do we use mixed conditionals, Gina? Well, let me explain. Let me tell you. So let me give you a better example, Gina. If I had studied more in high school, so Gina, I want you to finish the sentence. If I had studied more in high school, I would be da 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 now. Okay, and that's the answer. So Gina, go ahead. Everybody can finish that sentence if you want. If I had studied more in high school, good. The first is the third. So the first we use the past past time. If I had studied more, if I had studied more in high school, I would blah 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 now. So it's a past action with a present result. So give me give me an example of that. Finish that sentence. What what would happen? What would you be like now if you had studied more in high school? Noir says she would be living in Canada now. She used present grammar. Perfect. I, I would be. Sorry, it's not present because remember, would is past, but be is okay. I would be living in Canada now. Good. Nice sentence. What else? Give us another one. Something in the past affects now. That's why we use it, Gina. So go ahead. Try to make that sentence. Uh, Pintu, if you had seen me, you should have stopped your car and came. Come, came, come. Hmm? Oh no, sorry, you're right, Pintu. If you had seen me, you should have stopped your car and come to help me. What is the error in the sentence? I think it's fine, Pintu. If you had seen me in the past, you should have stopped your car and come, came, come. No, it's good. It's a good sentence, Pintu. You're rocking it. You're killing it, bro. Denise, I would be more successful now. Cool. Yeah, that one works. Sarah Salah, I think Karam is asking for the document that you teach her. Oh, um, so today, Karam, I'm not really using a document, as you can see. I'm just using the Smart English uh, page, but I would be happy. Give me a second, Karam. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hook you up. I'm gonna take. And I'm gonna copy it onto the document, and then I'm gonna give it to you, Karam, and you will be rocking and rolling. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit messy, but here it is. Let me give it to y'all. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Karam, that's for you. All of the stuff we did today is on that document. Okay, that sounds like that's what you wanted. Okay, uh, so are we good here? Did everyone get that one? If I had, if I had, had mm, Vlad, I'm not sure about yours. Because why, why only more money in the past? Why not money now? So if I had more money, not had had, just if I had more money, I would live in a better house. Why does it have to be past? I think your sentence would be better in the present. Gina, if I had studied more in high school, I would get ahead in the rat race of my mates. Correct, Gina. Your sentence is, it's, it's almost perfect. Uh, it does make sense. If I had studied more, had had studied more in high school, sorry, not had. If I had studied more in high school, I would get ahead in the rat race of my mates. It, it makes sense and the time is good. Okay. What's going on, Wani? What's with the frowny face? Uh, Juan, I, had I studied more in high school, I would go to a more prestigious college. Yes, Juan, that is a good sentence. That's good. Okay. I have, I have, if I would get it. No, Maria, be careful. After if, we don't use will and we don't use would. We only use the, those in the second, in the big part, not the small part. Uh, Pintu, if I had studied more in high school, I would be in a different position now. Mm. Baboom, bro. You just made a mixed conditional, and that would be useful on a grammar test or a writing test or a speaking test. So use that. That's awesome. All right. We're pretty good. So I think we've done it all. Uh, we've done the type twos. We've done the type. We've done the zero, the zero, the one, the two, 
and the 3, and the 4. We've done it all. We've done five different types of conditionals today. So I hope everybody didn't get too lost. If you did get lost, remember, you got the document. Everybody has the document now. I've shared it with you. See the little critters? One of these should be Karam. Maybe he's the camel, or maybe he's the auric. Not sure what an auric is. But anyways, if you're not sure, and it's a little bit difficult, watch the video again. Check out the smart videos. Everybody, we've done conditionals before. There's a lot of teachers who do conditionals, uh, but maybe some do it slower than this. So go back. You know, I got videos about conditional. Sean's got videos. I mean, there, there's a bunch of videos. Check them out. They're all good. Thank you. Thank you, Pintu. I'm working on my pronunciation. I've been an English teacher for a long time, so I like to think that my pronunciation is clear, yet fair. Fair to, you know, speaking quickly. Uh, Aisha, had I been forewarned about the traffic, I would be on time now, is another amazing sentence. That's called killing it. That's called crushing it, Aisha. Maria, I had known, if I had known English much better in the past, I would have gotten a better job. Okay, and that's also correct. So you did a type 3 conditional. Everything is in the past. Also good. I think that's it. I think my work has been done. Pintu is on track for success because he's going to go watch Sean and Mark. Uh, and get some awesome writing tips. Everyone else, if you had trouble with that, check it out. The document is here. All the information that I talked about is here with tons of examples. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Keep studying. You're all amazing. Mwah! Big kiss from Canada. Love you all as usual. Have an amazing weekend, and I hope to see you soon. Peace, love, no war. Plant some trees, drink some coffee. Sleep in on Saturday. Have an amazing weekend. Bye-bye, everybody.